Hello and welcome to today's LectureClips.com tutorial. Today's topic is the angular momentum and of course the principle of the conservation of the angular momentum. This is the problem for today. You can see that this is a wind turbine. Huh? And uh, the head of the wind turbine is supported with a hinge here at point P where the origin of the coordinate system is. This means that the entire head of the wind turbine is rotating with the angular velocity omega 1 which is pointing in the z direction. And in addition to that, here you can see a propeller which is rotating with the angular velocity omega 2 which is pointing in the positive y direction. Alright, the given quantities are the moments of inertia ICX, ICY and ICZ those are the moments of inertia of the propeller. Yeah? So the propeller is the object which has the mass. The rest is to be considered without mass, even though it might not look like this in the draft. Never mind. The draft is just to, to help you with the imagination. So the propeller has a certain mass and those are the moments of inertia of the propeller concerning the x, y and z axis. We also have the two angular velocities, omega 1 and omega 2, which both are constant. This is very important. Constant means that these quantities have no acceleration. So they keep rotating with the same velocity and don't accelerate. And in addition to that, we know the mass and the length a, which is not an acceleration, but the distance between p and point c, as you can see. Yeah? This is just a, a distance, the distance a. We're looking at the angular momentum lp. This is the angular momentum vector concerning the point p, this point here, which is the origin of coordinates as well. And the second question is all torques at this point as well. First of all, we have to look at the coordinate system. The coordinate system is fixed with the head of the wind turbine, so the coordinate system is also ra rotating with the angular velocity omega 1. So this is a moving frame of reference, this is a rotating frame of reference. And the whole the whole coordinate system is rotating with the angular velocity omega 1. Well, the first question is about the angular momentum Lp. How do we do that? We only know a formula for the angular momentum of the center of mass, as we only have those moments of inertia of the center of mass. This means we can start by finding the angular momentum concerning the center of mass, the point C. And this is Lc equals IC times omega absolute. The IC here, this one, is the moment of inertia tensor, which is a 3 by 3 matrix uh, with the mass moment of inertia in the leading diagonal. So this one here, what you can see. Now, I did not write down how to calculate the absolute angular velocity vector because it is very easy. The absolute velocity vector is the sum of omega 1 plus omega 2. Yeah? So omega 1 would be the vector 0, 0, omega 1 and omega 2 would be the vector 0, omega 2, 0. And if we would add it up, we would get this vector here. Huh? So there is no angular velocity in the x direction, but there is the angular velocity omega 2 of the propeller in the y direction and the angular velocity of the coordinate system and the whole head of the turbine, which is omega 1 in the positive z direction. Now here we have to multiply a matrix by a vector and the result of course is another vector as you already know that the angular momentum is a vector as well. You know how to do this so for the x component it is this times this plus this times this plus omega 1 times 0 which is our 0 so at the end we just get icy times omega 2 and icz times omega 1 as a result for the angular momentum vector Lz concerning the center of mass, the point C. But we were looking for the angular momentum concerning the point P, not of the point C. So now we have to convert our calculations with the following formula. We know that the angular momentum Lp equals the angular momentum Lc plus Rcp cross mass times Vcp. And this cross product here is very important. Well, LC should be clear, this is the vector we just found, the angular momentum concerning the point C. RCP is the positioning vector from the point P to C, so from the point whose angular momentum we are looking for to the center of mass. Cross the mass multiplied by VCP, which is the velocity of C with respect to P, of C related to P. 
All right, let's have a closer look at this. Okay, of course, this is the vector LZ, as I just said, we just translate from here to here. Now we have plus RCP, we established before that this is the position vector from P to C, so we have to go in the positive y direction, and this is exactly the distance A, so it is 0, A, 0 cross, and now we have the mass, which is a scalar, times the velocity vector of C with respect to P. And of course for this we have to make a separate calculation. But we recognize that C is making a rotation around the point P with the angular velocity omega 1. It is very important not to use the angular velocity omega 2. Of course you can, but as you see omega 2 is parallel to the distance A. Yeah? So if you would establish a vector which is the cross product of omega 2 and A, it would give zero as a result because the two vectors are parallel. So the velocity of C related to P is just 0, 0, omega 1 cross 0, A, 0. This is simply a rotational movement. Yeah? This is just the velocity for a rotational movement because C is only rotating around the center of curvature, which in this case is the point P. And at the end we have to just finish the calculation about the velocity VCP which gives as a result that it is a negative x direction minus omega 1 times a and at the end we make this cross product here, we add these two vectors up and this is the result for the angular momentum vector Lp. And now I want to show you an alternative method you can use to calculate the angular momentum vector Lp and this is without this formula. Well, as I've mentioned in the introduction video into the topics of angular momentum, under certain conditions you can convert the angular momentum LC to a random point, like P for example, without using the formula from before. So first I will tell you the requirements that we need to meet in order to be able to do this and then I will show you how it works. The premise is that both points have to lie in the same body. For example on the same rod or like here where both points, the point C and the point P, are both lying on the head of the wind turbine, okay? So the points are in the same body. In these cases we can do these calculations. And it works like this. Over here we write down Lz equals Iz times omega absolute. We did this because we already knew the moments of inertia of the center of mass concerning the axis, because they were provided in the instructions. Because of that we can build up the moment of inertia tensor. If we would have been provided with the moment of inertia concerning the point P, we could have simply wrote LP equals IP times omega absolute. And then we would directly find the angular momentum vector LP concerning the point P. The only problem is that we did not know the moment of inertia concerning the point P, but only of the point C. But we can calculate them. We can calculate the moments of inertia of the point P and then write down LP in that way directly. So we have to use the moments of inertia of C and convert them to the point P and then we could find the moment of inertia tensor concerning the point P directly, which will lead us to the angular momentum vector LP. And we do this by using Steiner theorem or the parallel axis theorem. If you are not sure about using the parallel axis theorem, feel free to rewatch the video about the area moment of inertia from the static series. Huh? because there I explained this in detail. It basically works the same for a mass moment of inertia as for an area moment of inertia. For an area moment of inertia we found another moment of inertia considering an axis which is parallel to the old one by saying this is the area moment of inertia of the old axis plus the distance squared times the area. And for the mass moment of inertia it is mass moment of inertia of the old axis plus distance squared times mass. Let's have a look at this. Well, we know we want to find the IPX, the IPY and the IPZ. Well, how do we calculate the IPX? We know that there is an ICX, which is the mass, moment of inertia, concerning an x-axis, but running through the point C. And now we want, we, we want to find the same one, but 
running through the point P. So we know this is the one running through the point C plus distance squared, which is A squared, times the mass. So the IPX equals IZX plus mass times A squared. And for the Z direction, we know that there is an ICZ, which is the mass moment of inertia of the point Z concerning the Z axis. And we want to find the same concerning the Z axis, but only running through the point P. So again, it is that one plus the distance of the both Z axis, of the Z axis through C and the Z axis through P. The distance of this axis is A, so A squared again, times the mass. That's all. Only the ICY stays the same because along the Y axis, the both points lie on the same body. So that is the same moment of inertia. Yeah? There is no distance between parallel axes because they lie on the same axis. So the IPY equals the ICY. And the reason why we have a plus here is because we are going from the center of mass to a random point. So away from the center of mass is always a plus. Yeah? And then we just multiplied with the absolute angular velocity vector and I didn't finish the calculations but you can already see that the x coordinate is 0, the y coordinate is i z y times omega 2 which is the same as before and for the z component we have omega 1 times this expression here which, al which is also exactly the same as we found before. So this is the alternative method how to find the angular momentum vector p without using the formula from above. Now the second question was about the torques in P. We have already found the angular momentum LP and now we want to find all torques concerning the point P. And this is an application of the principle of conservation of the angular momentum. Now the principle goes as follows. The angular momentum derived with respect to time plus omega r cross the vector itself equals all torques concerning the point P. Now, we will use this depiction of the principle of the angular momentum because in our problem the angular momentum LP is depicted in the rotating frame of reference. And the derivative of the angular momentum vector has to be done with respect to an inertial frame of reference. So this rule comes into effect. The derivative of the angular momentum with respect to an inertial frame of reference is the derivative of the angular momentum with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross the vector itself. Now let's have a look at this one by one. First of all we have to derive the vector of the angular momentum with respect to time and with respect to the rotating frame of reference. And this equals zero. Why? Now, Actually, this is the vector of the angular momentum and we have to derive this with respect to time and with respect to the rotating frame of reference. Why is this zero? First, let's look at all quantities which depend from time. Of course, the moments of inertia, the mass moments of inertia, I, C, Y and I, Z, Z are constant. The mass is constant, the distance is constant and the only quantities that could depend from time are the angular velocities omega 1 or omega 2. Now, in the statement of the problem it said both angular velocities are constant. So if they are constant, of course the derivative of them is zero because there is no acceleration, there is no angular acceleration. If they rotate with a constant angular velocity, the derivative with respect to time of them is zero. So if this is zero and this is zero, the whole vector is zero. So we are only left with omega r cross the vector itself. And here with the omega r you have to be careful because this is just omega 1 and not omega 2. Because omega 2 has nothing to do with the rotating frame of reference. Omega 2 was just the angular velocity of the propeller. So the omega r is just 0, 0, omega 1. And now we have to do the cross product with the angular momentum vector LP equals and now we have to look at the right side of the equation. The right hand side of the principle of the angular momentum has to contain all torques which included internal torques as well as external torques. Internal torques are for example frictional torques or the likes. And this is something we simply have to write down. We assume that there is a torque for each direction. So write down mpx, mpy and mpz. We just assume that they are here. 
An exception is if the introduction gives us the information that there is no friction in one of those directions, for example. Yeah? But usually we have to write it down like this. Plus, and now we have the external torques, like the one of the weight force, for example, in our case. So, because of the propeller having a mass, there is a torque of the weight force mg concerning the point P. And in this case, I always recommend using the definition of the torque, which is R cross F. If you're not sure with this, you can rewatch the very first introductional video of the static series. So, this is the result of the cross product here. These are the uh, torques at P and R cross F leads to this result. So, we see that the MPY is zero, the MPZ is zero, and you're only left with an torque at p in the x direction, which is this expression here. Now we have solved the problem, see you soon.